have you by any chance felt like what you are doing was not allowed or rejected by God? This morning, let me share with you what I experienced. As you all know, my wife and I were both students at the seminary. Which means all my family members were students. So, after deep consideration, and I decided I should support my family financially until my wife finished study first. I began to run a party supply store in front of UC Berkeley. The store was a decent size and seemed to be doing just fine. When the college students I was acquainted with told me the theme of an upcoming parties and I prepared items that fit the theme. So my business had gone pretty well. Then one day there was a big fire in a large restaurant on the way from school to my store. The route from school to my store had been blocked for about a month. In the meantime, another store which dealt with the same items that mine did appeared much closer to the school. So business continued to decline. So I couldn't help but reopen the store in a location directly adjacent to the school. But it was not long before my decision turned out to be wrong. The crosswalk from the school to my store was blocked again. Due to the construction of the new student center, they said it was inevitable that the crosswalk must be blocked for three years. Like this. I was kept from doing what I planned and tried to my best to do twice. Not one time, twice. You know? Just prior to the beginning of today's scripture reading, Paul and his companions seemed to be at a loss for where to go next with the gospel having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the good news in the province of Asia. They traveled around the region, prevented by the Holy Spirit from going south and west into Asia, or from going north into Bithynia. So Paul retreated to a coastal corner at Troas by God's strange and repeated no. This reminds us of the fact that the church often searches for God's calling in mistaken directions. And the Holy Spirit often speaks through our frustrating and difficult settings, the Holy Spirit is the driving force in the mission of the church. During the night, Paul had a vision 
there stood a man of Macedonia pleading him, pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. The Holy Spirit spoke to Paul through a vision to preach the gospel in Macedonia. Today's scripture reading deals with the vision that came from God and the impact on the direction of the church. Would getting a vision from God make everything clean? Everything clear? Even a vision requires interpretation. Interpretation of the faith community. This is the point in Acts where the author seems to join the characters as a part of the story. We immediately try to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. Immediately. How often have we heard a word from God and immediately changed our plans and our directions and headed off to a new destination. This famous we passage suggests that the author of Acts was one of Paul's companions and an eyewitness to the events recorded here. They went immediately. They went. It's the very way how the author enters the story here. When you read these verses, you might feel like you are one of the team members. So we went to Macedonia. Through the team apparently wasted no time to go to a city, the mission still required patience. Not much happened for a while. The appeal in the vision is urgent. And the response to it is immediate. But the result are not seen right away. Paul's vision was about a Macedonian man. But the first person who welcomed the gospel was a woman. A certain woman named Lydia. There we meet Lydia. She is a woman and seems to be a Gentile. However, Lydia is also wealthy. Women were, after all, very low on the social status in the first century. And Jesus repeatedly warned against the dangers of wealth. So, these team members might have prejudices toward Lydia, who is a wealthy, Gentile, and woman. However, the Holy Spirit goes in between them, breaking down all sorts of barriers. Lydia's gender, social, and even apparently racial status were not obstacles to the Spirit's transforming work between Lydia and the team members. 
When God changes our plans, we are invited to explore how God erects barriers and opens doors to mission in today's world as well. Like these first century missionaries met a Gentile woman and her entire household opened their hearts to the good news. How can we know where God is calling us and stopping us from? Today's scripture reading is about open heart. Paul and his companions opened their heart to the vision Paul had in the night. They opened their heart to join up and to be a part of a mission that takes a risk and heads off into unknown. Even though we don't even know what we don't know. We sometimes think, believe, and act like we know everything. This kind of pride prevents us from opening our hearts to what may take a risk and make us unsafe, uncomfortable. To our great sadness, a few days ago, we heard about a massacre happened in Buffalo by a young man who is stuck in his illusional stubbornness. We have witnessed the Ukraine war against Russia. And we have confronted the division caused by our dogmatic stubbornness in the church. We have experienced lots of hatred to one another, resulted from the closed hearts to one another. Today's scripture reading begins with the open heart, a heart that was open enough to have a dream and then act on it. A heart that is open enough to change our plans and direction and head off to a new destination when we heard a word from the Spirit. A heart that is open enough to catch a glimpse of the Spirit, even when we are sleeping like Paul. A heart that is open enough to accept the fact that we don't know everything. This beautiful morning, we pray that God open our hearts like God did to Paul and Paul's companions and Lydia and Lydia's households. Thanks be to God. Amen.